Pledge of the flag. Pledge of allegiance to the flag.
Thank you, Heidi. Yep. Okay. Um, okay, finance, Janine. Um, so the total bills to be paid is $62,518.68. The total bills that were paid are $20,806.34 for a total of $83,325.02. Any motion to pay the bills, please. Okay. Have a second round, please. I'll second. Any questions on any bills at all? Yeah, are we on budget? I guess we will. Yeah. For now, but we're keeping a close eye on it. Um, we'll get a better indication then probably in the next 30 days. Um, because quarterly, for example, for any of the um, business privilege rate, that stuff hasn't started coming in yet. Right. So once that stuff starts coming in, and get a better feel for the taxes. Right now, we're still are, but as the next batch of quarters, we're going to get much better idea. And we've been pretty good with collecting tax revenue. Okay. Yeah, makes sense. It's been doing well. Last time I checked, last time I heard. Yeah, I've I heard the same thing from Does anyone else heard anything different? Okay. Okay. Well, I, I think we should try to, in the future, just a thought. We should try to hold the line and watch our expenditures because we don't know what the future is. Well, we actually are watching yeah, the know. expenditures. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know what we could all be breaking down or anything else, but we've got to be very careful because we can get ourselves in a cash flow situation. Um, well, the saddest part, I think, about the elevator is, I understand what you're saying, you said it's heightened about the finances as far as that's concerned, but there are a lot of money going into that, and to let it sit idle is not a good thing. Well, you have an elderly population, you've got to be careful. We, we cannot raise taxes. But we have that to way we, to we have to try to hold it now like they we try to hold it maybe because we've had a situation with the yeah. invisible enemy that's uh crucifying our businesses and I'm just saying it's a word of caution, that's all. Exactly. Yeah, I think we all I think we we'll all agree with that. You're keeping a close eye on that. I know that um, Heidi and Janine have been in greater contact. Um, I know that Roberta, um, especially recently her and Janine have been in contact with each other. So I think we're keeping a close eye on it. Like I said, as the next batch of quarterly come in, we'll get a better idea at that point. Yeah. So far, we're crossing. So far, we're watching. Good. Okay. Actually, oh, good thing. Okay. Um. Heidi, is there anything else you want to add to that? I'm gonna say no. You're still on mute, babe. I keep forgetting. Sorry, I keep forgetting. Okay. No, no, I don't have anything to add. She and I kind of went over everything really closely in the past couple of days. Uh, going over, you know, making sure that we don't overspend because of the fact that, you know, we don't really know where this is going to go in the future. So we are looking at things very closely um, and deciding what is the most important to be done. That's all. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. No further discussion. Uh, roll call. Mark Rodriguez. Yes. Gabby Kevin. Yes. Heidi Kramer. Yes. Nancy Ellis. Yes. Gary Garica. Yes. Kitty Mendicki. Yes. Frank McCarran. Yes. Okay. Uh, personnel, Janine.
they were giving us a thousand dollars trade. The new one is without the that, so we can bid, put it out for bid. Right. If anyone's wondering why we, it costs more, uh, and it and it is four wheel drive. The new one doesn't say four wheel drive, but it is four wheel drive. And Heidi and I did go over the finances for that, mm -hmm. and. We had put so much money away for a borough manager. We're not using that money. And we're going to have six months of that money, or seven maybe. So, I mean, right there, that, can, that we have it. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, uh, Jody? Um, just now I gave Bobby a list of uh, addresses that he needs to check into that I came across while I was driving up and down every street now in the borough, like you asked, to uh, check the streets. I came across quite a few things. Okay. So he's been working on that. And uh, I know Chris was in town and did an inspection today because um, there's another Afro-Asian market going in at the old... Um, uh, Club Serenity. Club Serenity, thank you, Jay. <laughs> Couldn't think of what it was. Um, he went down there today and, and did an inspection on that. And that's the one that actually moved from the old right bank location. Is that what it is? Yeah. 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 They 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 actually moved out of that down to there. Bad <laughs> I'm going to totally disagree with you on that. Club Serenity is the old Knights of Columbus Bowl. They, uh, I know they, they, were... they, they purchased that from the Knights. Okay. The Knights, we are now in the um, downstairs of the St. Jerome's building, the school. Um, the room is directly off the playground. Um, a lot of work's been done on there. Um, I mean, several guys, Dave Renzo, um, uh, Matt Claybaugh, Charlie Ackert, so just three of them on top of my head. Those guys have been winning. Incredible job down there, especially Matt. I cannot stress enough the great job that Matt's done down there. Um, Gene Logan came down and uh, put the uh, heating and air in force. Uh, they did a good job with that. Him and Cody came in and did a good job. So, any of you who've ever been in that room, when you go in it now and look at it, you're not going to recognize the work, the work they've done there. So I can't. Is Matt was incredible what he did. You don't no, it's, no, it's in the. Uh, when you walk in the downstairs, the door to the left of the building, where the playground area is. As soon as you walk in, it's that first first room on the right hand side. So it was most recently they were using it for um, the younger kids for the CCD classes. Okay. okay. Mr. President, uh, I have a question for you. Yeah. Uh, I know that we've restricted some of Bobby's activities, uh, given the red order by the governor, but uh, we keep Bobby in the hallway, so I don't know if he can address this, but is council intending to relax any of, or expand any of his duties, given the relaxed status now to yellow? Um, I guess that's a good question. Like last year, we, is it safe for him to do that at this point? No. <laughs> Thanks for turning the question back to well, me. Well, actually, uh, actually, <laughs> 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 uh, uh, actually, I mean, with Bobby being the fire chief and dealing with Lynn, let him make the call what he thinks is safe and unsafe for him to do. But I, I know Jody obviously. Councilman Jennifer brought up a number of issues with properties that she's seen that would obviously require him to right. start new citations and inspections, perhaps. And my understanding is the, I talked to Judge Porter last week, uh, he's been advised that court will probably resume on some even limited basis around June the 1st or June the 5th. So it seems that the timing would be that we're going to have a summer meeting for enforcement, the courts will be reopening. Well, he's been out doing outside Correct. stuff, right. but not going inside the inside. Door inside. But he may, we may want to start doing the, the you know, interior inspections. Yeah. Well, if it's a vacant home, there's nobody in there, why couldn't he do it, right? A vacant home. If he has to go check out a vacant home. I, I guess the question of that would be, this getting back to the uh, red and yellow, under red, um, anyone purchasing a home, the home inspector couldn't go in and do anything. But now home inspections are going to start again. Okay, that was my question. Yeah. So, so if that falls into it, I would think, I would think as long as walk comes in. Is it an occupied structure, they said, that nobody could go in, or does it matter? I think, I think what we 
try to do is avoid body going into occupied structure because of the risk of contamination. Right. So if there are, obviously we have dental registrations that may be caught up in the council of Paris and on the notice letter in that regard last month. Um, with closings having been delayed because of restrictions on real estate, those are going to be lifted. Uh, in yellow as well, so I would think that the body would have, you know, some calls for services to do inspections and those type of things. So I just think perhaps you're right that you should talk with Glenn and see what the safest course is, but I know we're burning the body maybe getting phone calls and activities or something. Okay. I think it would be, I think it would be the comfortability of Bobby. Yeah, I think we'll, we'll what, talk to him tomorrow and see that call. And see like, what, I mean, he was at my house doing my inspection, we were outside. Right. You have a problem coming up outside. Yeah, open air activities are right. one thing. Are you referring to, did you look at the letter? Yes. Okay. The letter is pretty specific under the uh, Chapter 261 Residential Railroad Unit Ordinance of the Borough Code. Uh, it's very specific. You can't have 18 people living in one house. The argument we saw, right, we have an invisible enemy that we've been listening to, with everybody protecting us with the virus that we can't see. This is a visible enemy. This, this jeopardizes our elderly, our children, and it jeopardizes our, the regional police department. They don't, know who they're, they're not, they don't know who they're going to go up and knock on the door. Are you referring to the people or are you referring to the coronavirus? No, I'm, I'm trying, I made a point, that's all. No, I'm I'm not not sure. I want to read this here. Let me, let me get through this. Okay. You gave me the green light for all this. So I'm, I'm not sure what you're sure. referring to. Uh, now, the argument is that the uh, all owners of any residential rental unit living outside the 15 mile limit set forth in 261-4B must have a local manager who shall reside within 15 miles of the borough shore and who shall be available as an emergency contract. This, this is the point I want to Part three. I don't know if you have a copy, Counselor, of this letter. I don't think I do it in front of that or I'm Part number three is the thing I'm going to allude to. The registration information shall be provided by all owners to the code enforcement officer and shall include the following. Owner name, address, telephone number, local manager, name, address, telephone number, property address, and uh, emergency numbers and actual number of the but here's, here's, the, here's the point. Any owner of a residential rental unit shall notify the borough within 10 days of a new tenant occupying, renting, or residing in the landlord's home and the owner's residential unit. That's correct. This, this has been, and this has been a part of our, uh, of our code. And, and the reason, you know, I've talked about it. I'm sure the council is in unison on this issue. Uh, We've got a drug problem. Everybody has the drug problem. This would be a good way to monitor who's living where without and the last paragraph actually states that notwithstanding any other provision of this chapter, the names and addresses of the tenants shall not be disclosed by any verb personnel in the event that the tenant is the subject of a court order requiring uh, that this information be kept confidential. What we need to do is to know who lives in our town. I think we're total agreement, Frank. That's why yeah, I, I think this is a, it's something that we could activate that's already on the books. We have good landlords. We have some that kind of skirt the law. And I think that this would be excellent to implement. And we, this is in, I, I brought this attention to the district attorney last week when I spoke to him. Uh, code officer, was he chased out? He's not here. No, we were, uh, well, he's we were familiar with this, and Roberta did a wonderful job researching it. Uh, I'd like to implement that. I, I, I'd like to go ahead with this because they are short books anyway. They are already started, Frank. They're actually about, they're already processing printing letters for it now. I believe that right, Roberta? Yeah, they've already actually started the process. It's going to take a little while. We're all going to talk about today because there's a lot of them that are out. They're very yeah, the, uh, the one of the issues, one of the reasons why I brought this up, one of the reasons why I brought up the discussion about Bobby's views to the code, there was a statewide moratorium because of the emergency order on evictions. That is also going to be lifted with the reopening of the courts. 
And as you know, we have record unemployment. I'm sure there are a number of residents in the borough who have become delinquent on their, re their rental payments. So we may see in June and July, uh, while we're, we may be under the yellow restriction, you know, a, a change in status for a lot of these rental units. People may move, people may be evicted. So I want to make sure that you know, Bobby is capable to safely go in and enforce the very provisions you're talking about, which would be notice of a new tenant and the corresponding rental uh, inspection if one had not been done, or if it's warranted under the change in occupancy status. But the, so, first, the first step, if I may speak, is actually getting the letters out, which the borough office has already started doing. Yeah. So they're already, they've already started the process. Thank you very much. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Parks and Recs, Heidi. What's well, Heidi? Well, Heidi is here. I'm right here. All right. Parks and Recs. Heidi. Heidi wants to have a farmer's car. What do you think? The old time we're going to put Mark on a thing. We're going to throw a baseball and knock him in the water. What do you think, Mark? Hey. I don't think I can raise <laughs> money. I'll do it all day long. <laughs> Heidi yeah, thought that was a good idea. Parks and Recs right now. Yes. What do you think, Heidi? Do you Heidi? think, Heidi? <laughs> Frank, do you have anything other than throwing baseballs and dunking in a water? You know, you said last meeting, Mr. President, that we need a plus. We need a, I think we should have, if we can, we should have fireworks. We should have a community day. We should have something. We should always the jewel of the valley. Years ago, I mean, Teddy Roosevelt spoke at Fifth Street. We got a picture of it on the wall. I mean, I think we had to take the lead here. Everybody's like surrendering, you know. The, uh, we live in the land of the free and the home of the brave. We're, we're like protective or everybody's taking care of us. I, I really think that, you know, things are getting better. You know, we're concerned about the businesses. So we should think about that, really. Well, what I was going to suggest, and Roberta did reach out concerning the fireworks, both the third and fourth are available. But we don't know for sure, sure. what the states would to do, agree to. So what my suggestion would be for tonight was we know the dates are available. Let's wait for our June meeting to make a final decision. Because we might, if it's still in the yellow in July, we right. won't be able to really do anything. Sure, I understand. So if everyone's okay with that, I'd like to wait until June we can make that firm decision. Yeah, I, I, but I agree with you. We need a win. Yeah, it's in the budget. And I, I'd like to see Shaw take the lead on it. I, I think so. And not only is it in the budget, but we have approximately 2,500 Roberta in yeah. donations we've received. Or it's been year more, so it's not. So we have people, residents of the area, not just Charlotte, right? Mm -hmm. in, in the Charlotte region, that have donated to it. So I think technically, yes, I agree with Frank. I think we should be looking at that. But I think we should wait until June meeting to get a better idea of where the governor stands. Thank you. You're wrong. Hi, is there anything else you want to add to that? Yeah. Thank you. Okay, police, Jerry. Um, next Wednesday is our regular police meeting. Uh, we will have a meeting tomorrow, emergency meeting. We did not adjourn our last meeting, but it's all executive session. It should be short. That's I have a question for Jerry. I'm sure you can ask me. He's been on a police board, he's a sheriff. Um, when I was mayor, I did not, I would not sign the contract at the time until Bob Hodson, who was a business manager, would put a drug policy in the contract that, uh, not that we question any of the police, but the contract was there that we could pull somebody. Pardon? I believe since you... Is it in there? We have. Yes, Good. it is. Um, yeah, because we, I mean, the police are excellent. It's, it's just always there to protect because I always believe that the military should be uh, supervised and monitored by a lay person. And that's one of my arguments, you know, when we went to the regional. But you have the police for what you're on. Please, like I said, we do it any random time. They can, the chief sure. can request somebody to go to the hospital and be, be tested. Yeah, and the drug tests are in there. Thank you very much. Yeah. Nope. He said I wouldn't be to go Answer. Okay. Thank you very much. Mark, can I say something? Sure. This is not even on the topic of anywhere, I guess. I guess it's parks and recreation. 
So I had a resident question us foregoing fireworks to help the residents put food on their tables and take the firework money and give it to the truck to truck. I don't know if that's the best solution. I don't know if that's something that I want to do, but as a council as a whole, I was thinking maybe just throw some bucks in and take it to the trucks for trunk trunks. We don't have them. Yeah, no, maybe. I'm talking about pulling it out of your own pocket. But the other thing, I think most of us at the state board show already have it originally. We have. Yeah, I think, I think just let everybody stay the past. The one thing I would say is a follow-up to that, um, and that is a fantastic program. You know where I stand on it. We are going to have three um, similar food drive programs over about the next um, five weeks, I believe. Um, this one is one on trunk to trunk. The one that... Um, 4th Street Barbecue was helping sponsor, then we'll let Nancy address in a second. And we have the one from Washington County Food Bank, which is June 15th. Am I correct on that date? Tell me if I'm wrong, anybody. 15th or 16th. Yeah. The one that Michelle... I'm talking about the Washington County one in June. That's June 15th, I believe. Something like that. The <coughs> Prospect. Yeah, on Saturday. Right. I know, that's why. Yeah, we just mentioned that. And that's for Charlotte people. Right. So, um, I, I, although I appreciate the, the request I gave you, I think individually, I think we're all stepping up, you know, financially. And looking around this room, just about everybody in this room, I've seen volunteer at one of the ones recently, or scheduled to volunteer at the one this week. Um, so we continue to be aware of it. Um, we appreciate the concern with it. I think I like to think we're doing a good job as a group. Well, I told her that I would bring it up, and. I just want to see this what you find. I did. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, fire and EMS, Frank? Uh, yes, probably not very good. No. Uh, we had 15, and there's no one story incidents, uh, two in Dunleavy and one in Twilight. On the uh, EMS, we had uh, in February, there were 94 emergency calls. Standbys 2, total 96. In uh, March, we had 115 emergency calls, 7 far standbys, total 122. In April, we had 85 emergency calls, uh, 2 far standbys, and total 87. You know, this epidemic is not only had an effect on us physically, but I'm sure at home and all the issues of being cooped up, Mr. President, has really been a lot of strain on a lot of families. Well, emotionally, it's actually you've been a good point there, Frank. Um, it, the one thing that people need to be aware of, you know, talk, reach out and talk to people. Because the people being home, um, that does leave a lot of depression um, and a concern um, is you know, how depression would that could lead to. So if you know people out there, reach out to them. Yeah, we can't go see people, but you know, reach out to them and talk to them as much as possible. Um, because being at home like that, it's it's, it's a, a problem that no one's really talked about. But being homeward bound as people are, it will definitely cause an issue. Yeah, you brought up a good point there. It really is something that everyone needs to be aware of. And, you know, no one needs to say This council's a wonderful job with uh, uh, helping people uh, coordination with the uh, police and the fire department. Uh, I think we've helped a lot of people who are in need and uh, the council here at Unison have always been very grateful and, you know, for uh, the people and we've, we have, we've done so much voluntarily. I'm very proud to be part of this group that uh, has helped so much. I agree. Okay, thanks, Frank. Uh, Jerry, have you any other I do not. Okay. Uh, do we have any uh, public discussion on agenda items? Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, of course. Public. You are public. <laughs> Kevin's outside the room, so he's not really public here. <laughs> we'll switch next time. <laughs> okay. Um, correspondence. Um, we went over some of the code stuff already. We did go over all the EMS fire. Um,
there any additional information support you guys want to give with support calls? Uh, I didn't even say it. No. Wait, wait. I didn't even say it. I saw the fire. Let me see. Yep, the it's right after the fire. 151. Oh, it's in everybody's packet. Yeah, right? uh, uh, they had 100, the police had 151 police calls. <clears throat> um, uh, in April, it's not broken down, which is what we did that in the police meeting. Okay. But um, also, while I'm here, I was just, I was a dude of code enforcement. Uh, violations were 74, citations were. 12 inspections were two. EMS uh, emergency calls are 115. Uh, fire standbys are seven for a total of 122. Okay, thank you very much. Yes. Okay, um, the MAC reports in there. Does anyone have any questions on MAC that's reported at all? Um, the next thing, and actually, I'd like the list of suggested paving. I know everyone got a chance, I believe, to take a look at the email that was sent out. Um, Jerry and I went out Saturday, and I think Jody went out Monday, and conversing back and forth with everybody, I believe everyone got a chance to take a look at it. I'd like to actually take that list and add that to number 11 on the agenda, if possible, so we can advertise um, to get the ball rolling on that. Okay, you want to add my to that list? Uh, yes, we can. Is it oh, on? Okay. Okay. Okay, yes, we'll add the back and shade to that. And then we'll go ahead and get them and advertise. Um, I previously talked to the solicitor before the meeting. Um, they don't, I'll get TJ to write everything up, get them over to Steve. Steve will get the advertisement in order so that way we can uh, advertise it to open up the next month's meeting. So we'll put that as number 11 on the, on the agenda if everyone's okay with that. Uh, it has to be an advertisement. So which one do we want to do? We're talking about resurfacing and which one we are Agree. We're going to do one. We don't want them to come in and give us right. a black ring of all. Well, we're going to be corrected on, on those, and then we'll make sure we're TJ will work with that before Steve sends it out. As long as everybody understands also, these are recommendations. Right. And then when they give us the bid back, uh, we're going to sit down as a group and say, okay, that one costs too much for what, it, what where it is. You know, we might not want to do that one for what it costs. And, and that's true because the ones we have, there's no way that the numbers we're looking at would be able to afford to do everything on there. But once we get the bids in, we can see what's most feasible to get done. And we should be able to get a bunch of them done this year. Get the bids out now and things go green, we'll be ready to go. Um, okay, next, um, Steve. Oh, I'm sorry, next. Uh, yes. Do we want to state that now? No, we're just going to put that as number 11 in the gym. Okay. And I'm going to state how number 11 is going to be. Well, that's why I said I want to add it as number 11. I want to add, that, I want to add this, this street paper as number 11 in general. I think he means to clarify it. Yeah. We'll, we'll do that as part of the motion. We'll, 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 yeah, we'll do that as part of the motion. I'm sorry, Mr. Well, a lot of the ones that I have written down were ones that maybe just a section of them Right. Like, for instance, along um, Shady Avenue by uh, Adele Hopkins' house, mm -hmm. right there next to the curb on the travel side of the street, it's all the potholes all filled in. Maybe if they could just, could our guys just do that strip right there? Well, that's what we said. Some will be fixed and some will be totally resurfaced. Right, right. right. Yeah, TJ's going to take a look at, take a better look at the list and he's going to tell us which ones he think they can handle. Okay. And which ones they can't, mm -hmm. um, but we're going to put them all out on the big sheet and go from there. I mean, the, the people who come in and estimate it might come in and say, "Well, instead of patching that, that little eight foot, we'll, we'll mill it real quick for you, since we're in town, we'll fix it the right way." So we, we don't know what we're getting into, right. cost wise. Or, so and there are some of them that you can't fix. I don't know if they do this or not, but even if they just mill it, they'd be way better than what's there now. Like the hours, you know. Well, we'll we'll see what they say. We'll wait till they bring it in. Okay, um, Steve, I believe you have a report. It's probably a good time to. Can we do that now? Yeah, let's go ahead and do that now before we get into the agenda. That's okay. I just wanted to advise uh, council uh, uh, conversation I had today with Michael Flame. 
<clears throat> Hopefully everybody can hear me. Uh, from DCV. Can you hear him? Yeah. Thanks, Heidi. Uh, I, I had a nice conversation with Michael Foreman. Uh, DCV obviously is one of the appendages of the governor's office. It's uh, severely restricted on the type of work that they're able to do right now. Uh, Mr. Foreman told me he is working. He's working from home uh, without administrative support. But he's uh, fortunate to be able to you know, continue to do the work. Um, DCV is obviously being taxed with a lot of work right now. That is the office that was overseeing. Um, got the applications for exemptions, for closure orders, all sorts of issues. Um, and they're managing, you know, helping to assist with the pandemic responses. So um, it sounds like he's got his hands full. Uh, but he did relate to me that uh, despite the pandemic and disruptions, the EIP or STMP program that we've been going through with the Dennis Martinax group is nearing completion. Right? He wanted me to share publicly tonight and with council as an update that he received a 170 page draft report um, following their study of all the aspects of the borough. And uh, he is going through that report. He hopes to complete it this week. He will have some commentary on behalf of the department that he will send back to our consultants. And um, basically what he was informing me was that uh, by June, he would hope to send us the draft report for discussion at a public meeting. Now, um, he did tell me that he has prohibition on travel by the governor's office until the region goes green. So he said he would not be able to do a physically present meeting. Uh, but it is important that we have this meeting in June, and, and he explained why. The state works off of a fiscal year that ends June 30, and new grant opportunities begin July 1. So part of our discussion was, I was inquiring if we were able to have a meeting in June, properly advertised, conducted by Zoom, where he could discuss you know, uh, remotely the report and share with us its findings, as well as the draft, that we would be able to in effect complete the report review, have it approved in June, and then be ready to follow the recommendations of the report to pursue grant funding in July. Um, he did, didn't go over all the topics with me, but um, he said the report is comprehensive. It addresses every issue that was within the scope of our engagement, which would be administration, facilities, parks, finances, streets, blight, administration, employment, zoning, planning, regional police, all the way down the list. So I would expect to stay in communication with him. Uh, he was kind enough to share his cell phone with me to be available. I told him to discuss this tonight and get back with him sometime next week after he provides his commentary to Dennis Martinak's crew that perhaps we could have him at the agenda meeting on um, June, June's agenda meeting, have the public discussion and then have the final report available for approval at the regular meeting the following week. So he didn't think that was overly ambitious. You know, I, I gave him thanks on behalf of the borough council for seeing the project through during the pandemic. Uh, you know, I think we've all been concerned there were going to be some delays in receiving the product from uh, DCD and the stand team. But it looks like we'll be able to have that adopted in June if we agree with the recommendations and the product and able to pursue grant opportunities July 1. So awesome. um, that, was, that was really welcome news, and I just want to share that with council. Um, there's a few items that he'll probably share with me next week that may require action in addition to that in June's meeting, and I'll deal with the president and the appropriate committee heads on what those items may be. He didn't want to give me, frankly, he said, Steve, this is a voluminous report. I'm not prepared to go, we have a pre-arranged call for today. I'm not able to go through all the recommendations in it, but he is going to get the highlights to us. So we're not handicapped in July. Uh, and he said, really, it's very important that we stay on this timeline because a lot of, you know, we would be the first group then of consideration for new state grant monies July 1. So, you know, to, to, to comment on Councilman Patera's concerns about the budget, the good news is we may be able to identify some grant funding sources as early as June that we can pursue in July. So 
So we'll have a really nice forecast of what the end of the year is going to look like. Thank you. 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 Okay, sounds great. Um, before I get to the agenda, I think Nancy, you have one thing you wanted to address? Yes, I just want to remind everybody that on Friday from 2 to 6, we will be doing the food distribution of perishable and non-perishable foods up at the Long Valley Vote Tech. It will be sponsored by 4th Street Foods, and um, they'll be giving out breakfast sandwiches frozen. Uh, there will be breakfast bowls that are frozen, macaroni and cheese, some of these things. Uh, we're going to have a little farmer's market there. We have a couple farmers coming in. Um, they'll be giving out fresh produce. And I believe there's a farmer coming to give us eggs. So um, also we'll have nutrition bars, um, cookies. They're going to have snacks and water. And they'll have some cleaning supplies. So we're really proud of that, and um, Dave has reached out to a lot of the companies that he deals with for the uh, donations, and uh, they all stepped up to the plane. And the time of that again is? Two to six. Two to six. Hey, Joe, do you want to address the other one also? Yeah, um, this Saturday, the small town big parts food drive will be held uh, here at the Shawnee Fire Hall from 11 to 1. Uh, pick up for the food uh, is in the alley at the, the entrance to the fire hall. Uh, we'll have a separate section uh, where people with our walkers can come. We'll have their food in bags so it's easier for them to carry. Um, the fire hall right now, Roberta saw it today, is full of food and we've had some tremendous large donations that have come in this week that have been a great help to us. Um, it's, we're probably looking to spend approximately $7,000 on food plus the, uh, the donations that we've given. So uh, we're asking everybody to enter the alley at the 3rd Street end. You'll pull up with your, uh, your trunk open. You'll, your box of food will be put in your, your trunk. They'll close the lid and off you go and exit at 4th Street. Dave, what are they doing with the stuff that's left over? Are they just taking it to the next town? More than likely, yes, that's what we've done. The Fallowfield one, what was left over, we took to Denora and had to add a little bit to it. Um, what was left, well, we got rid of everything from Denora and started over fresh for Charlotte. So. It's all non perishable. The only thing we had in Fallowfield was bread. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we're prepared for, I believe, 300 families. So, Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. When Jerry spoke in the direction, it reminded me. Um, they will be using both levels of the uh, vote tech, and they'll be distributing on both levels. So we're going to have two lines of cars coming through there, and um, they have planned for approximately 500 families. We are servicing uh, the high rises, and we've gotten there this salt ready. So we got a very good response from them. Okay, thank you. Nancy, is Long Valley Career involved, or that's just where we're at here? Um, I believe that they are also involved, that with their employees will be, the teachers and the employees have uh, stepped up also. Thank you for asking that. Yeah, thanks. Okay, let's go ahead and go to the agenda. Item number one, approved selection of the Kubota tractor um, bid part of the Coastal Program, and the price of it is $14,553.40. Motion. Second. Second. Oh, good. Good enough question this time. Well, no, it's no question. I wanted to explain because if people were wondering, that is the most expensive one that we got. We got four bids, and that is the most expensive. Um, but the the one we have now is a Kubota. <clears throat> it's lasted 16 years. It's been on its side. It's been on its back. It's, uh, it's been on its roof. 
Yeah, it, that's what I meant by the fact. It's been all over the place. And they, they keep, um, it keeps going. So the guys have a lot of faith in it, and they've had a lot of faith in the dealer, which I won't mention. The okay. dealer, dealer was always pretty good with them. Okay. Just in case. Okay. And then it is actually They did a lot of research. I mean, I question it because John Deere is also good, but uh, they just felt more comfortable right. sticking with the boat. Is this part of the budget to buy that truck? Yes. Yeah, we had that in there for. This was actually part of last year. They, they kind of limped last year's through, um, and the, it's gotten to the point where they're spending probably more time repairing the old one. They're losing time to be out there working, keeping the other running. Now this price, is this the lowest price to meet the specification? It's, it, the is, price. it was the lowest price, but it was the um, low, it was, the, it, there was, yes, there was one lower, but they felt for the, what they were looking for, this one actually fit the bill better. Well, what they asked for, all the standard equipment that they asked for, if you read the equipment, actually averaged out to 17198 but they gave us a 3400 and thirty-nine dollar discount. That's why it's fourteen five fifty-three now, uh, because we are a borrower. And you get what you pay for. What is a great name? Yeah, it'll last a long time. Oh, like I said, the service department and where they go is actually uh, pretty good. They, they tell me that. And I'm sure that the guys, after having the boat for the last sixteen years, can probably do some things on it themselves. Agreed. Bring in another thing and they may not be able to. Right. Okay, any other questions or discussion on that? Yeah, they, they were very, very um, happy with the um, boat that they, they've been using all this time mm -hmm. and the fact that it keeps going. So that's why they more or less lean toward the, the boat. Okay. Okay, roll call. Mark Alderson? Yes. David Catholic? Yes. Heidi Kramer? Yes. Nancy Ellis? Yes. Gary Jericho? Yes. Jeanine Mundy? Yes. Frank Carrick? Yes. Okay, number two, to authorize to sell the old Kubota tractor. Should, should we put the, the price into that, or did I mean just reading and put it in there? No, I put it in when I gave the motion. Oh, okay, I didn't put it. Sorry. Yes. I did, didn't I? With that. He asked if I gave the motion, the price of the tractor, and I gave the motion, but I did. I gave the price of it.
there's a motion second for the 1100. Is there any additional questions? Or questions? No, I want to explain that. We had a little uh, discussion with that. Uh, of course, we would love to buy them a new truck or a fairly new truck. Uh, we told them to pick and choose either the Kubota or a new truck. Um, <clears throat> we're hoping that this truck gets us by another year. Um, body wise, the body may be a little rough, but we are told by the mechanic it will be a legal, sound, and safe, and safe vehicle once we're, once he's done with it. And um, we're hoping we can live it through and get another year out of it instead of trying to buy a new one at this time. So I just want people to know in case it blows up in three months, uh, we don't know what's inside the motor. It's not the motor, it's just, it needs brakes, it needs upper and lower control arms. It just needs wear and tear items right now, but it still runs good. Okay. Okay. And it has 107,000 miles on it. Okay, no discussion, can I roll call please? Mark Audrey. Yes. Gary Kenley. Yes. Amy Trainer. Yes. Nancy Ellis? Yes. Gary Derrick? Yes. Good evening, Yes. Friday, Derrick? Yes. Okay, number four. Approved hiring summer workers at $10 an hour with start dates of May 19th, uh, 2020 for Ethan, Amana, and Christopher Worgen. Mm -hmm. Second. Second. Mm -hmm. Second. 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 Uh, are those the two that we had last year? Uh, one of them is one. Ethan E. And, and did anybody know the other person? Christopher Warren. Yes. Yes. He's been a fireman since he was like a junior fireman. He was a good kid. He was highly recommended. I think that's a key record. He was highly recommended. He applied for the part time position. He was one of the ones that applied for the part time position. Oh, okay. I don't know. Okay. And he was, he was the second one for that. Any other questions from anybody? Okay, roll call. Mark Lottery. Yes. Gary Kennedy. Yes. Amy Kramer. Yes. Gary Derrick. Yes. Judy Mushiki. Yes. Frank Harris. Yes. And number five, approved hiring summer workers at $10 an hour with start dates of May 26, 2020, for Malik Niels and Joseph Ramsey. Motion? Motion. Second? Second. Any additional questions or discussion on those? What's that, here? I said from the peanut gallery. Oh. <laughs> he called you the peanut gallery, maybe. No. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no questions? I'll take that as a compliment. It is. <laughs> Roll call. Mark Andrews. Yes. Jay Kevin. Yes. Hayden Kramer. Yes. Nancy Ellis. Yes. Gary Derrickson. Yes. Janine Mateki. Yes, ma'am. Frank Tahir. Yes. Number six, offer of repairs to the Schindler Elevator. I'm covering that word. Motion. Second. Second. At what cost? Uh, oh, that was covered by our insurance. Is that correct? Mine is already covered. Correct. And well, the. Did we hear from the insurance? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I believe it's deductible is a thousand. Okay, any other questions on that at all? No. Okay. Roll call. Mark Audrey. Yes. Betty Kepler. Yes. Katie yes. Kramer. Yes. Nancy Allen. Yes. Gary Derrick. Yes. Jeannie Lindy. Yes. Frank McCann. Yes. Number seven, approved resolution authorization for a railroad warning device upgrades. Motion. Second. Second. Question on that at all? Roll call. Mark Bonarici. Yes. Jane Kepler. Yes. Heidi Kramer. Yes. Nancy Owens. Yes. Gary Garica. Yes. Jeannie Matiki. Yes. Frank Carrick. Yes. Uh, number eight. Authorized to open an account named Street and Sewer Fund for monies received from agreement with the authority of the Barber Shaw Award. Motion? Motion. Second? Second. Questions? Roll call. Steve. Oh. Yes. That's recommended to open up a different account. Yes, I spoke to Ray and he suggested the savings account would be the better option. Okay. That was my question from last week. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Thanks, Roberta. Yep. Mark Lodrici? Yes. Gary Kepler? Yes. Heidi Kramer? Yes. Nancy Ellis? Yes. Gary Garica? Yes. Jeannie Matiki? Yes. Frank Kepler? Yes. Number nine, offer to sell property in the highest bid on parcel number 160-028-0001-0034-00. That's at 211 and a half Well Avenue at a price of $75. And this was previously advertised. Motion for that? Motion. Second. 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 Thank you. That was the highest bid mark. Um, we got only the only bid we got. Oh, it's the only It's the next door neighbor. I was going to say it's the neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. Isn't that the guy? Is this the guy that just bought the property up there? It can't be. Yeah. Okay. 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 Any other questions? I don't remember. Roll call. Mark Lodrigo. Yes. Jamie Kaplan. Yes. Heidi Kramer. Yes. Nancy Ellis. Yes. Gary Jericho. Yes. Katie Mundiki. Yes. Yes. Uh, number 10, we're authorized use of the community room for Mondo Academy for the arts for rehearsals. And that would be after the um, state goes yellow. It does permit for 25 people. There's about 14 of them. And I know that's going to be the next question everyone has. Motion. Call. No, 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 sorry. Okay, motion. I have a motion. Second? Second. Okay, any other questions? Mr. President, I would like to propose an amendment to that. Sure. Obviously, as you stated, they're going to be under the threshold for yellow. I would just ask that you amend the motion to include an acknowledgement by the Bondale Academy for the Arts that they will adhere to all the orders concerning social distancing. Uh, that way, council cannot be really question as to the use of space during a period where closures or restrictions are in place. So I'll just ask that that, that uh, be included in the motion. That's fine. Who made the original motion? I did. Okay, so what you do? I am perfectly fine with that. Okay. You have what Steve said there, Roberta? I made the motion. Okay. I'm sorry, who made the section? I did, I agree. Okay. Yes. Okay. Everyone good on that? So, any other questions? Roll call. Mark Lottery. Yes. Gary Kepler. Yes. Heidi Kramer. Yes. Nancy Ellis. Yes. Gary Garica. Yes. Kitty Mudhiki. Yes. And Frank Carey. Yes. Okay, number 11, to advertise for the recommended paving projects um, that were in everyone's packet, um, including which ones would be considered for paving, as well as which ones we were recommending for repairs, um, with the bids due in by, what is the date of our June meeting? Remember the calendar, Andy? Yeah, uh, June, yeah, I was grab it here. June, June 3rd. 3rd and 10th. Yeah, so let's have the bids, as part of the motion, the bids in by noon on June 3rd. Is that okay, Lily? That'll that be for our agenda time? meeting? Is that enough time? See, is that enough time? Yeah, sure. Okay. Or do you think we should wait to do the agenda at the regular meeting? I'm sorry? Would you would suggest we do it at the regular? 
I don't see why we couldn't go through them. Yeah. I think she's, I think maybe your question is that you give them enough time to get through the end. Is that what you're asking? Yeah, because I know a lot of them aren't even back to work yet. A lot of them are just going back to work on Monday. Fair. So, fair is it going to be? Why don't we make it that side? That only gives them a week and a half. That's what I'm saying. So I paying. don't think that that's going to be a feasible thing. I don't know if her pay, papers weren't. They were because there was only so many of them that could be there. Just like with my my guys, they couldn't go out. They couldn't do what they normally could do. Pendot had all their guys there. Why do we why do we see what our response is? Are we going to? We could always what we could always do it for because I know we want to get rolling on it. Why don't we do it for our regular meeting on June tenth? So yeah. in the meeting in the meeting tenth, um, we won't adjourn the meeting. We, we can, can recess, recess it. And come back a few days later, so proofs so we don't have to wait all the way until July. Yeah, that's fine. Is that everyone okay with that? That gives yeah. everybody pretty much a month. Right. Right. Ten through the ten, so you have time to move over. Yeah. Why don't we do the ten? Ten. Because we're gonna we're, we're gonna have to recess. You want to do the ninth? That's yeah. You do. Why don't you do the ninth? Ninth. Okay. But I think we'll still we may still want to. Uh, we decide that we want to recess to give us more time or not. Okay, we'll go with the ninth. Yeah, I just think it's time. Okay. So just for clarification, the motion is actually to advertise the list of recommended paving and repair projects um, that everyone has. And they, we do that, the bids we do in the borough office by June 9th at 12 o'clock uh, for us to review and open at our meeting on June 10th. Perfect. And we're good? Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Any other questions on that, Jerry? Well, uh, well, 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 no, some people. Yeah. Are they going to be? Yeah. 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 I motion. And motion. Didn't somebody down this end make a second? I, I don't think we did. I'll second. But someone did. I'm sorry. I, I thought Kenny I, and Nancy. I apologize. I thought I heard someone make a motion. Second. Mm -hmm. okay. Want to vote or Nancy? Yes. Jerry Kaplan? Yes. Amy Kramer? Yes. Nancy Ellis? Yes. Jerry Kerrico? Yes. Nikki Matiki? Yes. Frank Kerrico? Yes. Okay. I guess we'll say no way for redress of grievances, right? Oh, I got one quick thing. This here, the guys. Also, are going to be needing a roller for uh, it's a drum roller vibrator for um, the third on the street. Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> um, how do you want to handle this? Do you? Um, I didn't think they need that yet. I thought they were still okay. Well, that's what I was saying. Do, do we want to advertise? Do, I mean, do we need a bid on a roller? I don't know what this thing costs. What? Well, I, I thought they were okay with that to make sure the budget. Now I know they wanted it for the streets that's going to need to be prepared. Okay. They depend on how much it costs. Right, that's I don't know. Yeah. We have a budget. I haven't cleared that. Wait. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. I just want to know what to tell them when they ask. Yeah, I'm, I'm sure those of you who on the Coast Wars program also, I would suggest we just have TJ get some bids on it and at least give us an idea for what Yeah, because he gave me the information. I mean, it's here. Okay. Well, he left it here. I don't know. Okay, we'll have, we'll have TJ look into that just uh, for the Coast Wars program. Okay, there's nothing else. I ask for a motion to adjourn. Um, well, wait a minute. I need to announce the final um, decision on the voting precinct oh, yeah. for the town. Okay, the second precinct, which is St. Andrews, will remain St. Andrews. The third precinct, which was at SPHS at the Riverside Plaza is now going to be in the basement of the fire department for this election only, which will be June 2nd. The fourth precinct, which was the Shaw House, is now going to the City Outreach Church, Reverend Andrews Church, so they will be there for this uh, election only. The sixth precinct is moving from the Byzantine Church to the St. 
can resolve this. So, and we will have two precincts in St. Andrews. And just for everyone's knowledge, if anyone's not sure, St. Andrews is the previous Mary Mother of the Church, so since it is the recent name changes in the last few months, just to refresh everybody's memory. Oh, thank you. Okay. All okay. right, so the Byzantine is at Mary Mother. The, the SPHS is at the fire hall downstairs. Charter House is at City Reach Church. Surrounds. You mentioned that. Is at City Reach Church. Or Mary Mother. What was it? I assume the election of office will send stuff out to the voters then. Well, I understand. Yes, it's right. We'll do that. They did it the other time. And we'll, we'll also post it on the board of Facebook. Yeah, I'm going to make sure. Okay. I know it's going to be the Republican Party that's going to be the Republican Party. Yeah. 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 Okay. I was just wondering if we should do the interview. Mayor? North Bell Vernon drew up a new letter mandating the, the, the town go to the I was just they wondering if we need to do that also, changing it from red to yellow. What? Yeah, we'll uh, when we did our mandate, it was to follow. Yeah, we have to speak right here. Yeah, okay, he's going to follow with the And the other thing I forgot to mention about the, the food drive at the fire hall is a tremendous big thanks to our firemen for letting us use the hall to store the food and to distribute it from. And they're going to be helping a lot um, on Saturday. So if you could include that in your article, that would be great. Yeah. Try again. That's it. Ask for motion to adjourn. Let's no, Second. Second. All in favor? Favor. Aye. Opposed?